This video is brought to you by Kando. Well, I think it's safe to say that as of 2024, the Apple Vision Pro is the ultimate media consumption device. Enjoying photos and videos from my iCloud library and streaming video off YouTube and more has never been this incredible and immersive. But that's just 2D content. 3D content, or as Apple likes to call it, spatial media, brings a whole new level of depth, emotionally and quite literally, when it comes to viewing photos and videos captured in this format. It allows you to almost relive past memories, which is just such an incredible experience. However, there are a few issues with capturing and consuming spatial media content at this early stage in Apple's new spatial computing era. Number one, you can only really officially capture spatial media with three devices, the Vision Pro headset itself, along with the iPhone 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max exclusively. So if you wanna capture spatial media, you know, photos and videos, but you don't have the latest and greatest iPhone or the Vision Pro headset itself, you're basically SOL or pretty much unable to do that. Unless you wanna drop several thousand dollars on a full frame Canon and a dual fisheye lens or spend infinitely more money on some crazy proprietary hardware that Apple is using to capture their spatial media stuff, if that's even possible. Not to mention learn how to edit 3D content just sounds like a nightmare to me. But next up though, and on the same note, you can only shoot spatial photos with the Vision Pro headset itself at this point. Which by the way, is not at all discreet nor super convenient. There the resolution is also capped at 2560 by 2560, which is roughly 6.5 megapixels, which is a little grainy, not to mention at best nearly half and at worst a little more than a quarter of the resolution you'd be getting with your typical high-end smartphone camera. And finally, point number three, as for spatial video capture, it's capped at 1080p on the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max, which is likely due to the fact that the two parallel cameras that are used for it, the main and ultra wide, are not the same resolution nor have the same focal length. So digital cropping has to occur to match things up and without getting too technical, the process is far from perfect. Meanwhile, with the Vision Pro headset, you can record slightly higher res 2200 by 2200 square spatial video with identical cameras, thankfully, for more you know consistent video quality. But this video is kept at 30 FPS along with the iPhones, of course. So yeah, when it comes to capturing content for this incredible headset, not only is it kind of awkward and inconvenient, but it's also super expensive and limited, requiring you to not just have the headset itself, but the newest iPhone 2, which will run you at the very least $1,000, which is technically cheaper than $3,000 for a Canon R5 and that fisheye lens I mentioned, which is just $2,000, of course, on top of video editing software and time involved. But hear me out, what if there was a middle ground? What if, in order to capture this content, you didn't have to buy a brand new iPhone for $1,000 plus that you don't need? Better yet, what if you didn't have to buy camera hardware that you especially don't need to do this? What if the solution was $299 for limited time only? Well, my friends, the solution is this. Meet the KuCam Ego from Kandao a proper standalone 3D camera system that can actually shoot spatial content for the Vision Pro. So first up, I gotta say, this thing is designed super well. It looks like a GoPro had a baby with one of those flip cams back in the day, but in the best way possible. It also has a thread, so you can mount it on a tripod, gimbal, monopod, you name it, along with a corner to thread a lanyard through, which they include in the box so you can shoot handheld with more peace of mind. They also include this little magnetic mirror piece you can attach to the camera portion. This way you can shoot selfie or face cam content knowing you're centered which is pretty neat. And not surprisingly, there are dedicated controls for capture and viewing like you would have on a point and shoot or mirrorless, which is nice. You also get a side door that reveals a USB-C port for charging along with slots for a removable battery and a micro SD card. So yeah, unlike the iPhone 15 Pro and the Vision Pro, I really enjoy the fact that with the KuCam, you can hot swap batteries like a typical camera and also record to external card media. This is just a full size SD card reader, micro SD card adapter, by the way, not a micro SD card. But yeah, I love that it records externally because internal storage is arguably more limited and precious, you don't wanna to touch that. So yeah, card media plus swappable batteries is a big plus for me. The whole package also comes in at just 160 grams as well, or a little over a third of a pound. Overall, the Ego has a fantastic, not to mention easily pocketable design. On the back, however, you have a nifty little 2.54 inch touchscreen that packs a punch. Don't let its size deceive you. It has a resolution of 1440 by 1600, which equates to a PPI of 847. In comparison, the Apple Watch Ultra has a PPI of 338, which looks pretty sharp up close too. This display is also super bright and can output up to a thousand nits sustain, matching what your iPhone can do, which is super impressive. The interface is also very simple, intuitive, fairly responsive, and very well designed like the rest of the camera. Last up, you get two capacitive buttons on the display, the top right one, which locks the camera, and the bottom right one, which brings up menu toggles. But anyway, let's get into the meat and potatoes, shall we? What about the camera hardware? Well, like the Vision Pro and unlike the iPhone 15 Pro, you get identical camera lenses and sensors, except these are definitely geared more towards capturing content. 
They have a F1.8 aperture, which gives you some nice natural depth of field along with their half inch image sensors. These cameras are also placed 65 millimeters apart, which is somewhat close to the average pupillary distance between human eyes. Apparently this helps you capture the world as you see it, which makes it super attractive, I think, for capturing spatial content to enjoy with your Vision Pro. There's also, of course, built-in synchronization. And so there's no need for any annoying post-production work to view the content you shoot. As for the resolution of these cameras, each image sensor offers 12 megapixels. This gives you 3D or spatial photos that are 4000 by 3000 opposed to 2560 by 2560 that you get with the Vision Pro alone. So on paper and in practice, the images that you capture with the KuCam often turn out sharper looking than what you can capture with the Vision Pro, but we'll touch on image quality later in this video. As for the video resolution, the KuCam is on par with the iPhone 15 Pro, offering 1080p video quality with, of course, a corresponding more conventional 16x9 aspect ratio, opposed to the 1 to 1 aspect ratio you get with the 2200x2200 video you can take with the Vision Pro by itself. And while it's fair to say the Vision Pro's 1x1 video aspect ratio and slightly higher resolution give it an edge here, one thing the KuCam has over both it and the iPhone 15 Pro is a higher captured frame rate. KuCam captures two frames of 1080p video at up to 60 FPS, so when you view it combined in the spatial media format, the footage looks more true to life and less like a cinematic memory of sorts. I really enjoy this aspect when watching videos I take of my cats or people. It adds another layer of depth that you literally cannot capture with the Vision Pro or iPhone at this point in time. But having said all that, what's it like to use this camera? Well, in my experience, shooting videos and photos with it is actually quite simple. It's a very point and shoot experience, especially with the hardware controls built in, and looks pretty much just as normal as shooting with the smartphone. You may get a look or two, but certainly not to the same level of attention if you were going to robocop your way towards someone or something to capture spatial video or photo with the Vision Pro. There is also autofocus built in, and it's all right, definitely not as high end as you would get with your phone or a mirrorless, but it definitely works and is tapped to focus. Thankfully, there's also manual focus, which I recommend for a little more control. Something I would also recommend is not taking super close up photos or videos. You have to account for the minimum focusing distance here, but also the fact that the two images and frames have to come together to look 3D. If you don't shoot far enough away, it's going to look a little messed up, sort of like when you don't focus your eyes and you see double vision. But with all that said, what's the image quality like on the Vision Pro? Well, put simply, it can be pretty great. You definitely get extra resolution and less graininess with the photos, no doubt. And again, 60 FPS video is just a real treat to consume in 3D or the spatial format. I will say though, the iPhone 15 Pro edges out the KuCam spatial video a bit, and that doesn't surprise me at all, simply because Apple is a trillion dollar company that has billions of R&D in its camera systems and computational photography, AI, the works. But the KuCam definitely holds up not to mention again, it offers a more consistent image quality considering it's operating with two identical camera sensors and lenses, unlike the Frankenstein situation with the iPhone 15 Pro, which essentially makes your left eyes capture lesser quality again, since it has to crop into a wider, lower resolution 12 megapixel ultra wide camera, opposed to the right eyes 48 megapixel sharper wide angle camera. What I can say is, KuCam seems to perform better than the Vision Pro when it comes to capture, which has a definitively worse camera system primarily designed to just provide you with video pass through while using it. KuCam once again has superior depth of field compared to the Apple headset thanks to its wider apertures and sensor sizes. Not to mention it again is able to capture photos and higher res at that, which is even more impressive considering the iPhone can't capture spatial photos yet at all. So overall, while it lacks some of the capabilities that you get with the Vision Pro and the iPhone 15 Pro, you gain literal functionality with the ability to take photos, higher res 12 megapixel photos to boot, along with much smoother video that makes up for the slight lack of image processing done with the iPhone, which of course you pay hundreds more for. Well, I'm sure you think this is great and all, but the real question is how do you get the footage off of here and onto the Vision Pro for viewing? Is it a simple process? Well, for the most part, I would say yes. Although it's a little weird at the moment and does require you to convert dual frame MP4 and HIC image files into the spatial media format. You do need an Apple Silicon Mac for this, but I think it's much more reasonable to assume you may already have one of these opposed to having the latest iPhone. And if you don't already have one, regardless of if you care about this at all, you should definitely get one. An M1 or M2 model will serve you very well, but. Back to the video. On your Apple Silicon Mac, all you have to do is download Kando's Spatial Media Converter app, open it, and select a folder containing raw photos and videos taken with the KuCam. Then you just click Convert, and it will quickly convert those raw files in that folder into spatial media and put them into another folder labeled Output. Next, I recommend uploading the converted spatial media to an iCloud Drive folder, which you can access with the Files app in Vision OS. From there, you can download the newly converted footage and voila, you are now viewing spatial content you captured with this incredible little 3D pocket cam. But conversion aside though, there's actually one more thing that I failed to mention in the design portion of this video about the camera. It's a little cherry on top that I think you'll really appreciate. 
If you just want to quickly preview the footage you captured without immediately going through the conversion process, you can use KuCam's included viewer, which literally magnetically clips onto the camera itself. It takes advantage of the very bright high-res screen to give you a proper immediate 3D preview of what you just captured. And with the viewer on, you can also cycle through the media captured in your device's gallery with the hardware buttons on the outside for navigation, which is really nice. This way, again, you can know what you captured pretty much instantly after recording it. You can also share the preview with others without the need to pull out your expensive Vision Pro or Mac to convert the files for viewing it on the headset itself. So all in all, if you own the Vision Pro and want to enjoy high-res photos and high frame rate video, or just want to shoot content for it without actually owning the headset or a brand new iPhone, the KuCam Ego is the best choice for the job considering how well it's designed and how great of hardware it has. And that about wraps things up here. I hope this video was enjoyable. It certainly was for me. I'm a big camera geek and love the Vision Pro, so this was a lot of fun to talk about. Check out my link to KuCam in the video description, and you can get $70 off until April 1st if you buy off their website. You can also purchase it on Amazon too. And as always, I'm Noah, and I will catch you all in the next one.